Hey guys, and welcome to another MDO composition tutorial. This is the 11th part in the appetizer series, and today we're going to take a look at how to get rid of the final issues so we can then move on to the compositor. Okay, so let's just open up the file we worked on last time. I'm just save that as number 11 as well. Okay, so um, the first issue we have is that. Oh, actually, I should not forget to start the screencast key, so you guys can actually see what I'm doing here. Great. I always forgot to do that because I thought about it a few weeks ago, but I never really used it. Anyway, um, or actually, I didn't think about it, but someone mentioned it, and uh, yeah, that was a really great idea so, idea, so thank you for that. Okay, so let's just select um, the oil first, because as you can see, there's still this border, and we want to get rid of that because we removed the olive, but I forgot to remove the uh, the border. Silly me. So once you selected the oil, let's just hit the slash key on our numpad. And you can see everything is gone except for this mesh. Now let's go to um, sculpt mode. And usually you could just use the smooth tool, the smooth brush to just smooth it out. But then you'd actually also still create a, a bump. I'm sorry about that. That was my mobile phone. It made some weird noise. And now what we want to do, we want to first of all use a sub subtract brush to bring that down a little, and then we'll smooth it afterwards. Okay, so go to subtract, make sure the radius is a little bit smaller, like this, and then just, um, well, you know, just subtract it back into the ground. So it becomes a bit more smooth, and... Do that as best as you can, and once you can no longer get it any better, we will use the smooth tool afterwards. Let me just see. I might have subtracted a bit too much over there. That should be all right. Now let's just switch to the smooth brush. Let's increase the radius a little, or just zoom out, and then just, well, smooth it. And you can see we're getting fairly close to a perfectly smooth surface. Like this. That should actually be alright, I don't think. Okay. That is no longer no noticeable. Now let's just hit the slash key again to see... Okay, you can see we also rotated this olive. So now the board is in the wrong place. So let's just go to draw again add and let's just hit that once or twice over here and over there so we actually get this border back and that's okay as well so already we took care of the first thing so the uh, next thing is a bit more tricky to solve and the problem we have here is that um let me just bring up another image here okay so this is our scene the way it looks right now and you can see there are no shadows at all and the reason for that is that a blender internal um knows that this um, this glass is transparent and it knows that it has a very very small um, alpha value of 0 0.05 and therefore there is a shadow but you cannot even see it because it is this light okay now why is that the reason for that is that is that blender cannot uh, render caustics at least not with blender internal it can do it with um, blender cycles although it has quite a few issues there as well but in blender internal the thing we render with right now um, it cannot do that, okay? So what exactly are caustics and why does a glass, even though it is nearly perfectly transparent, why does it still cast shadows? Let me illustrate that on this image here, okay? You can see this is a glass and let's just assume, I know it's not true, but let's just assume that this is 100% reflective, 100% uh, transparent, okay? So nothing is absorbed within the glass, but still you can clearly see this shadow. And the reason for that is that a light ray actually hits this surface and then gets bent, okay? It gets manipulated in a way so it um, goes, it changes its direction, okay? And all the light rays are gathered in this bright area here, okay? And because they are gathered here, they are then missing over here. So although this glass is 100% transparent, you can see a shadow here because no, lead, no light reaches this place because they are redirected to over here. And that's what caustics do. And there are all sort of caustics like you have in swimming pools and so on and so forth. And yeah, Blender cannot do that. So we need to do something else. 
but we can get kind of close to this result, fortunately, okay? But it um, requires a bit of tweaking. So let's just close that again. And what we have to do now is we have to create a second scene and use that second scene so we can just only render out the shadows, okay? And this is a bit tricky at first, um, if you've never done that, but it's not really that difficult. Over here you can see we've got render layers, okay? The problem, however, is if we just create a second render layer, and if on that second render layer we only render a part of it, um, the, the other things are still influencing that second layer, and we do not want that. So we need to create a new scene, okay? And the way we do that is quite simple. Let's just hit the plus button over here. You can see all our scenes are listed here. If you don't know what scenes are, you can also watch one of my first in steps in preparation tutorials on scenes, okay? So, um, yeah, let's just go with plus and select full copy. And now you can see it says scene.001, okay? And now we have different scenes. Now, on this scene 001, we want to delete a few things, okay? First of all, we don't need either the olives or the bowl or whatever. Let's just move that over there. S B, select everything, delete. Okay, that's gone. Now, the next thing we don't need either is, let me just see. We also don't need the wine, okay? And we also don't need the water. Uh, yes, or let's just, yeah, we also need the water as well. Let's need that as well, okay. Now let's select this table, and, and you can see if we go to scene, scene, the normal scene, everything is still as we set it up, okay? Now on this second scene now, we are going to select the table, and we are going to change the material, so that it just says shadow, receive and receive transparent, but shadows only, okay? And that means that it does no longer really render the table, it only renders the parts where there's actually a shadow, so it only renders the shadow. And we only need the shadow, so that's a good thing. And now for our glass and for our, our two glasses, we are going to create new materials, okay? Delete both of those materials, because if we wouldn't do that, we'd have the same issue as before. Then select material for both of them. Let's call it... Um, shadow underline generator because it's there to generate the shadows okay and also uh, i noticed i just created one of those previously when i tried something um yeah in my case it says ch shadow generator 0 0.001 but you can also go with just shadow generator doesn't really matter now um what we want to do here we want to first of all make it so that it only casts cast only, okay? So it only casts shadows, it doesn't render... Um, the glass itself isn't, doesn't get rendered, it just casts shadows. Now if we render this, um, let's just go with F12, you can see this is what we get. We get only the shadows. And that's nice and dandy, but it's not really what we want, okay? Because they're way too dark. So next thing we're going to do... Um, Let me just see something. We have all our lamps. Because the shadows, shadows are a bit too dark. Um, why is third day this dark? It doesn't really matter. So now let's just select those. And also let's make sure we have shadow and distance. Yeah, okay, that's cool. And let's just set them up as transparent. And then let's just make sure we have a Fresnel, uh, an alpha of one and a Fresnel of... Let's go with three for now. And just so we can see what you're doing, let's just uncheck cast only again. So you can see what happens. Now it's actually getting, um, it is um, transparent in the middle, but no longer transparent towards the edges. And let's just go with two actually. The lower the number, the less transparency we have. Let's just set the blend up a little bit more. Like this is not too bad, 2.3. And let's give this, give this a render again. And you can see, now we get something that kind of reminds on caustics, okay? It is, of course, nowhere close real caustics, but it, well, it kind of 
gives us an, an, an acceptable effect. Okay, um, you can see this additional scene renders in only 3.16 seconds. So now we can also um, bump up the samples a little bit over here. Um, yeah, now I'm not quite happy with that yet. Uh, let me see. Because those places are a bit too dark. So let's just decrease the alpha to about 0.7. Okay, turn that again. And you can see it's still a bit dark, but I think that is actually all right. And now on this second scene, let's just select all the lamps, especially this lamp that's actually casting the shadows. Let me see. Yep, this one. And let's set the sample to 12. And now it takes us... a bit more time, but I think this is actually all right. And you don't need to worry about the red one because there's supposed to be a red shadow, because on our other scene, the red from the shadow is already considered, so that is okay as well. Um, cool, now what we also have to do, we have to select those and set them to cast only again because we only want shadows. Once again, F12, and you can see This starts to look fairly cool. Now, keep one thing in mind though, although this shadow looks rather nice, we're not going to use that probably, because we're not going to um, add shadows over the glasses, we're going to use a mask for that, okay? And the way we do that is quite simple, we go to over here, we go to our first scene, back to our first scene, we go to the render layer, we, we check object index, okay, and this way we can create a mask out of a certain object where the object is visible and where it's not visible. Then we select a the table, then we go to object data, and then we just bump the pass index to one, actually. Yeah, I fiddled with that already, so um, in your case it should say, say zero, so just change that to one. And if that is done as well, then we need to do one last thing, because right now, as you might see, um, if I'm on scene 001, and if I hit F12, you can see it only renders scene 001. And then, if I go to scene, and if I hit render over here, you can see it only renders this scene. You can see there's no, there's no other render layer here, because we only have one scene. Um, and in order to change that, we need to go to the compositor. And if you hit F12, only those scenes are rendered that are actually, in a way, connected to a composition, composite node, okay? Right now you can see we have one render layer here, and you can see it's render layer from scene, okay? Now if we duplicate that, if we have render layer from scene 001, and if we now go back there, if we now go to, the, to um, this other scene, for example, if we hit F12, you can see it still only renders um, this scene, okay? And that is because... Come on, okay. And that is because we need to make sure that both are connected um, to the composite output, okay? So we have to, for example, put in... Yeah, we, we can just duplicate the composite node like this. And we need to make sure that wh whatever scene we are on when we render, there this is actually set up this way. So we are usually going to render this uh, whole Blender file in the scene, not in scene point zero zero one, but in the scene. So if in scene we have set it up this way, so we have um, both render layers connected to a composite in some way, you could also use um, color mix, do it like this. That would work as well, because now they are both connected to a composite in some way, okay? It's just important that yeah, they're connected to a composite, otherwise um, the scene will just be ignored, like this. Okay, so now we might actually render, give this a final render again. Let me see. Oh, one last thing. Um, there you do. We have index object over here, that is all right. Anything else? Okay, so now I think we should be good to go. Um, so just hit F12 and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so here we go, and now if you go to the node editor, you can see we have also check backdrop. We have this result from our from that one render layer and this from the other. And now if we combine them, we get a 
pretty decent result. Okay. So how do we do that? We have this index object, and as you might remember, we just enabled that in the render layer settings, so to say. <clears throat> Now, the way you use that is quite simple. If you connect that here, you can already see this looks fairly okay. However, um, that's just coincidence because if we had several objects on this layer with an index object, object index, I'm sorry, then you'd see all those at once right now, okay? So you have to separate them from each other and we can do that with a converger ID mask. And now you can see on zero, we just have everything that is not mask and then one two, three, you can see there's nothing on those other index, uh, object index numbers, values, whatever. Now, if we go back to one, which is the number we set over here, um, then you can see this is our output, which is exactly what we want. And if we go to smooth, smooth mask, you can see we also have it no longer disjacked and it's quite nice. And now we use this as a factor to mix things together. Okay, and you can see now it looks like this. Now, this is the wrong way around, so we have to move that to up here, okay? And this is actually fairly cool. However, as you can see, it's not quite the way we want it still, okay? So the problem is that right now we mix them together. We don't want to, we want to multiply the shadows onto the wood, okay? Because if you multiply things, then they become darker, and this way you can only, like, um, extract the shadows in a way. So let's set that to multiply. And you can see now this looks fairly cool. The only problem we have right now is that those shadows are a bit too dark, okay? Because the darkest part of those shadows shouldn't be darker than the shadows over here because this is like 100% dark, so to say. Um, or not 100% dark, but it's just the darkest spot in the scene because um, this is a solid bowl, okay? So the way we can make this shadow less dark, there are actually two ways. First of all, we could brighten up this image or we could just darken the white part here because this white part is the factor according to which those images are, or the shadows are multiplied onto that. If this is less white, then it will be less multiplied. Do it, do it however you want. I will show you a method of manipulating the ID mask. Shift A, color RGB curves. Put that in there and put that in there and connect to the camera. And you can see now if we drag that down, you can see this becomes darker, okay? And you can also see the shadows start to disappear. This is too, this is too weak. If we increase that a little bit like this, I just want to make sure... Oh, that was the wrong point. I just want to make sure that you can actually see that it's brighter in the middle. Just around like that. Just about like this. This is actually fairly cool. And now I think we solved our problem with the shadows. Now, one thing is important, and that is that... Why would that not work? Okay. And that is that we basically replaced um, this output, okay? So we will no longer use this image output for the rest of the compositing, but we're just going to say, okay... Right, let me just move that to up here. This image is now our new image output. And then we can work with that to get the rest done. So, okay, so uh, you might think that's how far we can get in terms of shadows with Blender. However, um, I thought it would also be cool to actually get some caustics. And since Blender cannot render those caustics, we just have to fake them, okay? And this is, well, not even as difficult as you might think. Of course, those won't be physically accurate, um, caustics, but really, who needs physically accurate caustics? Exactly. Nobody. So what you're going to do, we're going to fake them with some compositing, and I must say this is actually the part that I like to do the most. So let's just pull that to apart again. I know it's silly because we just uh, grouped it this way, but it's a bit easier to work with. So let's just put that to over here and that to over there, something like that. Okay, now if we want to have caustics, then we need to make sure that we can brighten up this area, okay? And we cannot do that with adding, we have to multiply it, okay? We have to multiply this area with with something, with, with a value higher than one, okay? And we have to create that value first. So the way we do that, it's actually quite, um, quite simple, really. We're going to add in a mix node, okay? We set that mix node to multiply um, over here. Now we are going to multiply 
this image or, or the alpha with the image itself. So the alpha looks like this, okay, because we um, checked shadows only. It only has an alpha for where the shadows are, okay. And then the other thing is the image itself, which looks like this, and then we get this final output, okay. And now, let's say the bright areas here are supposed to be the caustics, which is of course nonsense, but it's good to start with. So the next thing we would do, we would add in a multiply node. Multiply. Put that in there. Put that in there. And that's what we get. Um, not quite what we want. Um, the first problem is that it also um, multiplies everything over this um, over this glass. So we need to once again use this as a factor. And now it looks like this. Okay, still not quite what we want. Okay, first problem is that right now um, it's too dark. Okay? We don't want this to be this, want it to be this dark. What we're going to do? We're going to um, add in a vector map value i by the way if you don't know what the map value does i just covered that in the first steps in preparation episode 25 i guess that was about vector nodes um yeah and we're going to make a few settings here we're going to change the size let me just do it come this way the size to 17.7 and you can see this became much much brighter and the next thing we're going to do we're going to check use minimum okay because if we do that then um Right now, nothing happens. This just means that there are no values in this image below zero. If we change it to one, then there are no values below one. And now you can see, that's what we get. We get something that reminds you a little bit on caustics, okay? Just a little bit. And that's already a great start. Now, where is the problem? The problem mainly is that this image has values that are outside the actual shadow. You can see the shadows in here, and there are brighter values around it. And we don't really want that, because that just makes it look weird and wrong and weird and wrong. So, what you're going to do, we're going to dilate this... Um, let me see, dilate. No, to erode it. Erode it, okay? Uh, I can I can learn so many English expressions uh, while I'm doing this. Converter, um, filter, dilate, erode. And what the dilate erode mask does, this is used to um, adjust masks, uh, actually quite what you need right now. And if we ch increase that, you can see it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. And if we decrease that, it becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. And we're going with a value of minus 21, which is quite small. And you can see that looks much better. Now if we connect that, you can see we get caustics, or at least something that really reminds you on caustics. Now, the last thing we problem is ha we have is that this is not has not enough contrast okay everything is either gray or black but there's not not really a lot of stages of gray so in the way we change that we're going to add in a color rgb curve like this uh let's just connect that to there so and that to there okay now the rgb curve um you know the way this works i covered that in the first steps and preparation tutorials as well on part 20 or something about the color nodes um Whenever we get an input of zero, so whenever we get an input of black over here, then it becomes black, okay? So zero becomes zero. And therefore, everything stays the way it is. Now, if we increase that, for example, you can see we get an input of zero, which is black, but we get an output of 0.25 around, which is why it becomes gray. Not what we want, of course. So what we're going to do, we're going to change that back. And we're going to look... Uh, search for the value we have in here because we want to only brighten up this exact value and this value over here okay the way we do that is i can assume that this is less than 0.5 okay so we, we set a point over here and then we brighten this up and you can see yep this becomes brighter okay next thing i can assume or i'm just going to assume it is that it's probably less bright than point around 0.3 or something like something like that and you can see it still becomes brighter, so that is okay as well. Now, it's probably brighter than that, somewhere around there. I, th I guess it's in between here. If we change that, you can see, ah, we get our caustics. Now, let me just put that to up here. Then you can see only those values are being brightened up. The rest stays as it is. And that's pretty much what we want. And now you can see we have caustics, and they, they don't look perfect. I mean... Obviously, those caustics should be a bit closer to the glass, and over here, it doesn't look too bad, but it's 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 far from perfect. 
but I think that really isn't a big issue because um, to the human eye, if we just look at it, if we don't think too much, it looks perfect and that's actually what we want to achieve and this is even something I came up just recently so it's not included in the final image that I posted in the threads and so on. I need to um, yeah, update that later on. So yeah, this is how you can fake caustics and um, yeah, by all means, uh, I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. If you have any kind of questions or comments or whatever, post it in the comments. And yeah, thanks for watching and see you in the next part.